bringing the people behind our food to life. The way that we like to do it, you know, a lot of instructions will tell you to like make an X. Most people that uh, are into this professionally would cut the chestnut either like this, all the way around, and then it opens up very nicely when it uh, roasts. Or another type of cut is what I call the clamshell cut, and this is the one we use at the market, where we cut around like that. And then it sort of splits open like a clam. By the way, another thing is, is this is a specialty knife made for chestnuts. When you cut the chestnut, you're trying not to cut into the nut itself, just the shell, so that this a knife like this or something with a hook blade makes it nice and easy. Here we are roasting a few chestnuts. Now these have been out, uh, oh, for four or five days anyway at room temperature, so they've, some of the carbohydrate has converted to sugar and they've developed a little bit more flavor. And uh, we're using this pan with holes in it. That's a traditional uh, Italian or French chestnut roasting pan. Yeah, I made this myself, just drilled holes in a common steel pan. And the reason why you use a pan with holes in it is, is it will char the uh, outside of the chestnut shell and make it quite brittle and easy to peel. And also imparts a little smoky fla flavor on it, so actually the flame mm -hmm gets on the chestnut. But you can use a cast iron pan too in it or with very similar results. So we got them over the burner here and they're partially cooked now. You can see they're getting a little charred on the outside and that's what you want. Um, medium heat or so. And just uh, get them uh, stirred up. You see we've cut these clamshell style so that when you um, they open up um, nicely when, uh, when they're cooked. Some of these, alternatively, we've cut uh, with a single cut across. Why is it important to cut them? They'll explode if you don't cut the uh, nuts. Um, that's, you know, the, the shell is uh, pretty much airtight and uh, there's moisture inside there and so they will pop and literally explode if you don't cut them. I've had them on the pan here for, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, 10 or 15 minutes, and um, they're getting pretty close to being done. How do you know they're done? Well, you know, you can just take one and, and sample it, you know, and uh, see. People like them, it's like any kind of food. People like them, some like them firm, some people like them really soft. It's just a matter of um, your personal taste, really, how long you cook them. But um, if, if you don't cook them, it'll be sort of like, a little bit like eating a raw potato, you know? Um, so when they're done, see this one here? Hot and steamy and uh, ready to eat. A little hot. I'm pretty good to handle hot stuff though. There's an inner skin here that you want to get off when you peel it. That's a bush de Berizac. Sweet. Probably could have been cooked a little bit more though. So it's interesting on the inside too. Mm -hmm. This popped out of its shell entirely. You want to take a bite? Nice. See what you think? It may not be done completely, but... Mm. Or it may not be quite sweet enough either yet. Very nutty. These are, Very nutty. These have been, um, not been sitting out really that, that long. You know, like I said, they generally take... But they're not a nut, they're... They're, they're like a grain on a tree. Okay. Then nutritionally like brown rice. I said, here's another steaming hot. Is that a different variety? Bush to Betty Zach. I'll try it. The idea is to, um, you know, let them sit out at room temperature 
until they kind of get their maximum sweetness. And you can, you just generally judge that. I mean, you can sample them raw and kind of know when they're ready to cook, when they start to get sweet. Um, but then other than that, you sort of squeeze the nut and uh, when it starts to give a little bit, you know, and gets a little kind of, I guess, uh, spongy for the lack of a better word, it's usually ready to, ready to cook. And you see as, as they start to cook more, you can see the sh more shells are starting to open up now. And that kind of is a judge too of when they're done. These are great with a glass of red wine, like this. One, one of my favorite ways to use them is, is to put them in soups. Um, you can go ahead and cook them like this and then, uh, you know, cut them up, cook them with vegetables. Commonly people, people like them a lot with uh, Brussels sprouts, sautéed with Brussels sprouts. Um, they go with pork and lamb and duck and meats like that. People even chop them up finely and mix them with potatoes. And Karen wants one. Nope. <laughs>